Humanity Chats, How to Succeed, Julian Guthrie. Hey everyone, welcome to Humanity Chats. We do this on Thursdays. We get together and we talk about everyday issues that impact humans. I am your hostess with the mostest. My name is Margie Marge, as you all know. I am an author, visionary, and consultant. And today we have a rock star joining us. Her name is Julian, and I am going to tell you a little bit about her before we bring her from backstage. Um, you will be amazed. Julian is an award-winning author, a Pulitzer Prize nominee, and CEO of Alfie. Um, you know, she is a word geek. That is how she describes herself. A love of words, language, and storytelling has taken her from a childhood spent devouring books um, and reading the dictionary, guys, to a 25-year career in daily journalism, where she won numerous awards and had her work nominated multiple times for the Pulitzer Prize. Julian has written five books, five y'all, two of which are being adapted for television. She has interviewed some of the world's most successful and interesting people from Steve Jobs to Larry Ellison to Richard Branson, Peter Thiel, Elon Musk, um, Melinda Gates, Marissa Mayer, Christy Turlington, and the late Professor Stephen Hawking, who wrote the afterword to her third book. Oh my goodness, Julian has spent years researching how men and women succeed, and it's not the same. And so we have Julian joining us today. We're gonna talk about how to succeed. She's going to share some tips with us, and she will share about her company, Alfie. She would share about her books. It's going to be an amazing, um, what? We have like 27 more minutes to go. Unbelievable. We have to hurry up and bring Jillian into the house. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to our podcast listeners. Thank you, YouTube, everybody. Remember, share, 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 and subscribe. Here we go. We're bringing Jillian in. Come on, give her a round of applause wherever you're watching from. Hi, Jillian. Hello. That was the best introduction ever. I loved it. It, it is good to see you. You have such a lovely personality. Welcome to Humanity Chats. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And I'm so excited for our conversation today. Yes, Julian, um, I am excited too. But you know, first things first, here at Humanity Chats, before we get into the conversation, we usually want you to share three fun things about yourself, something that we're not going to find on the internet. Well, we're going to find it after today. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, you already you already revealed that I'm a word geek, that I love books, that I devour books, so to speak. So let's see, three things that are not out in the world. I love chocolate. I'm a big consumer of really good chocolate, 70% 70 pure cacao and up. So the darker chocolate, the better. Um, I'm a fan of ACDC. Uh, rock and roll. And um, what will be the third thing? I love horses. So I have, I have had a love of horses since I was a little girl and that endures today. So those are three, three things that are not out there in, in the world. Well, that's lovely to know. You know, I am a lover of chocolate too, but I think my secret is out there in the world because I love chocolate. I'm a cho I call myself a chocolate addict. And um, this this past um, Valentine's, I actually told people, 
please don't get me chocolate because I am tired of eating chocolate and I really don't want any. So um, you found you found your kin in me. Um, we oh, both love yay. Chocolate. <laughs> but chocolate, it has antioxidants, right? Wink, wink. So it's really super healthy for us. Well, um, thank you. Thank you, um, viewers, listeners. This is Jillian. Um, and today we're going to be talking about how to succeed, which she has done very well from the short bio that I read. Um, you know, if you want to learn more about Jillian, for those that are watching, um, the, the ticker is saying JillianGothrie.sf.com. That's her website. You can also go to the margimart.com blog and read about her. But you will learn more when you go to her website. So um, learn about her because there is more to her bio than that short description that I read. So Jillian, um, you are a big advocate for success and how we succeed. And um, it's Women's History Month. And you know that men and women have to work differently to succeed. So could you please um, tell us a little bit more about that? Well, I've, um, I have spent several years thinking about that. And I wrote a book called Alpha Girls, which was my fourth nonfiction book, and really looking at how women in male dominated industries can succeed, how men can be great allies, um, again, what are the differences between how women and women and men succeed? There's a starting premise that I would mention, and that is um, men are often um, evaluated, if you will, based on potential and women on performance. And so women, we tend to, we have to check every box. We have to have done everything rather than taking risks and kind of projecting out that we also have that potential, but so it's, we do this to ourselves where again, we have to check every single box um, that we've done this. We can't think, hmm, maybe in a year I'll be perfect for that job, which, you know, stereotypically is something that men are uh, more at, um, uh, able to take risks and again, are evaluated. So that's a starting point, you know, it, Men are based, evaluated based on potential, women on performance. Have you checked every box? We kind of need to get away from that. Women find ways to um, specialize in whatever their fields are to really stand out. Um, women who succeed use humor to diffuse and deflect in really, really clever ways. I think women, we need to have a level of uh, perseverance, grit, determination, as well as optimism, um, because the world can wear you down and you have to always get up again and persevere and believe that you're going to get to that next place. Um, I think one more thing that's really interesting is um, around kindness. Um, women who are kind are often seen as weak and men who are kind are often seen as complete um, and so there are a lot of double standards. I've just touched on a couple, but speaking of kindness, I think for women and for men, um, but I'm speaking here for women, that women should view kindness as a strength, not a weakness. Kindness is a superpower. Kindness is something that can open doors, open minds, launch businesses, launch industries. Uh, so there, there are a lot of differences and there are ways that we can really communicate better with one another across genders and understand these ways in which there are these unnecessary barriers and really uh, help move one another along on more equal footing, which hasn't happened yet. Wow. Thank you for dropping those nuggets. Um lessness kindness should be a superpower and so let's keep practicing that and you talked about the barriers and from what you're saying i see the implicit bias that sometimes impacts women because um when we want to apply for a job for example if 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 uh, a job if someone is advertising for a job even when a man doesn't qualify, he will drop his resume and believe strongly that he can do that job. But then for a woman, you're like, um, do I know how to do this? You, you're you not going forward because you want to make sure you're checking all the boxes. Um, in situations like that, what do you recommend that we do? 
Well, I really like being in way over my head, which I think is actually a healthy thing when you are kind of get 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 comfortable with the uncomfortable. Uh, when I was, you know, first starting out as a journalist, it was very intimidating. Your stories were, were going to appear that afternoon, that night, the next day. You had to get things right. There was a really short deadline. And so very, very intimidating. Um, you just have to keep at it until you get better and better and better at it. Uh, when I started writing books, I picked these subjects where while they're all about underdog stories they also were subject matter, I mean, literally rocket science, material science around the America's Cup, um, women succeeding in venture capital and tech, and then um, two people on separate continents trying to find a cure for a blood disease. So it's there's always a steep learning curve, and I love that. So I would urge people to embrace that, embrace the unknown, be willing to take more risks, be comfortable in the uncomfortable and uh, believe in yourself. I guess this goes back to optimism that if you work hard enough at something, you're going to get good at it. Like I did with writing. I didn't, you know, it wasn't a superpower that I was born with. I simply worked on it every day for 20 plus years. So if you don't get good at something after that sort of constant application, then you probably should wonder. But um, there's a term for this, a Japanese term called Kaizen, and it's assiduous in application. You are constant in application. No shortcuts. Don't cut corners. Do the work. You will get better and better and better at it. Do the work and you will get better at it. I was reading um, online today. There is a lady. Her name is Lovi Ajayi, and she said something about writing. She said, just keep writing and you will get better at it. And when you write, erase, but the key is to actually start and to keep at it. Um, if you want to be a writer, just keep at it. And so thank you for that advice right there. Well, and it translates to anything. I mean, to what you're doing, to whatever your listeners are doing. If you're in college, if you're in high school, if you're in a trade school, if you are a farmer, if you are an engineer, uh, whatever your asp aspirations are, you know, keep at it. Hard work uh, is is the way to get there. And very few people go from um, from you know day one, career one, job one, to where they want to be in life. And a lot of people pivot to their path as well, and that's fine. You know, Seventy five percent of people, professionals working today, are working in a field unrelated to their academic major. So I think there's a lot of comfort in that too. That you can take skills that you develop along the way and they can be transferable, translatable to what it is that you end up doing. I mean, I went from a journalist to a storyteller and now I'm a, a CEO and founder of a tech company. So like, what? It seems like a disconnect, but it's really a continuum. Well, um, so you keep at it, but this is the thing. You said hard work pays off, but sometimes you work so hard and we all know that there are these inequities there. And sometimes a woman of color may have to jump through a few more hoops. And so when you work so hard and you're not seeing the end result, what do you do? How, how, do, you, um, how do you keep going? I think that's a brilliant question, and I would love to hear your answer that, to that, too. You only have one choice, and that's to keep going. You cannot give up. And if that job is a place with, with, uh, with barriers, with systemic um, inequities, whatever they are, um, if there's a wall that you're hitting, then and you've done everything you can, then begin to look elsewhere. And that is fair. You've put everything you can, you have into succeeding. And there are people who will uh, put up barriers, who will underestimate you, who will undervalue you, and you have to find a way around. And I'm not saying it's easy. You know, there's, there's, not, uh, there's not one version of of whatever the, um, the dream is that we all have. We start at different places. Um, these inequities, inequalities exist. You know, it's now what I'm dedicating my 100% of my time to is, um, is creating a world where there is more opportunity, where there is less injustice, 
when there is more that is equitable in the world. So, but you don't have a choice, right? You, you can't give up. You have to get up and you have to find another way around. Someone tells you, no, it doesn't really mean no. It means find another way. That's how I look at no. Um, if you believe it's a fit and you are so determined, then just find another way. And I've had to do that multiple times in my career, in my life. So viewers, listeners, no is just another word for next opportunity. So find another way, says yes, Julia. Yes, no is not yet. Yes, not <laughs> yet, next opportunity. I'm liking that, I'm yes. liking that. So Julian, you did mention about your book, Alpha Girls, which I actually have um, on my shelf. Tell us about it because we're talking about how to succeed. And um, is that what Alpha Girls are? Tell us more. So I had written three books that were, uh, the first book had a lot of women um, as main characters, but then this, the next two were heavily male dominated books. Uh, one again about the America's Cup race and the, and the third book about um, a private race to space. And, you know, I noticed during that, during the publicity for, I would do events and there were a thousand people and there were maybe 10 women and, you know, this was in these really dynamic fields of engineering, entrepreneurship, venture capital, uh, rocket science, aerospace, aviation. And I began to think, where are all the women in these really key industries that help shape uh, and determine our future? So I determined that that was what my next book needed to be about. And I, of course, had covered the disparities that, that existed with women in technology, where only some today, 15% of the leaders at different technology companies, whether it's Apple or Facebook or on and on, are women. So I said, you know, I need to look into this. But then I wanted to look at the venture capitalists, those who are funding the startups that change the way we communicate, live, get food delivery, um, everything you can think of, you know, from DoorDash to Uber to Facebook to Twitter and all the social Instagram, social media. So I began to look at who are the women in venture capital who have succeeded. I learned that 94% of all check writing venture capitalists were men. So I thought, where are the 6% and I need to find them. And again, I think that's where optimism comes in. But I, I'm like, I know they're there. They're kind of these hidden figures and I have to find them. So I set about to find this group of women who had succeeded, had helped finance, build, mentor some of the foremost companies of our day, but their stories had never been told. And that's a common thing. There are dynamic women in all of these different industries, but for whatever reason, their stories had not been told. And here we are on Women's History Month. We are telling their stories. And this is in my marrow where I want to elevate women. I want to tell their stories. I want to tell the stories of great male allies. Um, you can't be what you can't see. So let's tell and share their stories. So Alpha Girls is um, is a really uplifting book. It's also very real. I wrote about the women when they um, when they when they made mistakes, when they were betrayed, when they went through hardships in their own relationships, when they suffered health setbacks. So it's not again. It, our paths are never just this linear ascent. Um, our paths are rocky, and we you know it's very tumultuous for most of us. Um, but again, it's a it's a it's a story about persevering and finding your way and specializing and maintaining your optimism and uh, maintaining your ambition, uh, your integrity. And when you succeed, you are not just lifting yourself up, you're lifting up others and causes that are important to you. So now Alpha Girls, this is really fun. Alpha Girls is being adapted for a television series and it's being adapted by a woman producer uh, who's one of only three women in history to have won an Academy Award as a producer. So that's pretty cool. Oh, that is so cool. I am psyched. And I, I can't believe I have you on the show. Yes. Um, hey, if you're, you're coming to the premiere, I yes, man. the red carpet premiere, you are going to be there. Oh, girl, I'm going to go. I'm going to work it at that. Yes, premiere. we are. You I have know. no I mean, We need to start thinking about our wardrobes. Yes, yes, y'all watch out for Julian and Margie. Um, yes. 
<laughs> Unstoppable. The new Alpha Girls, Alpha Girls version two. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Viewers, listeners, if you're watching, be inspired. Julian is just talking about resilience with all the adjectives that she used to describe the Alpha Girls. What I see is resilience. Um, she talked about perseverance. We can do it, but we just have to keep pushing and we have to try harder. Um, you know, as you talked about Alpha Girls, I couldn't help but to link it to your app, Alfie. Please well, tell us exactly. About you, yes, you are absolutely right. So after Alpha Girls, I went and I talked to literally thousands of people and I talked to CEOs, I talked to college students and saw there was a white space in the market for um, a mobile first platform that advances women. Again, from all walks of life, all demographics, all countries, all backgrounds, we needed to create, we need to create a new social learning network for women. Um, a lot of social media is great. A lot of it is not so great, particularly for women. So I set out to create a platform that we have now built and that's by invite only at the moment, we're gonna get it out into the world pretty soon um, that I think is beautiful. It is inspirational, it is real. It's a way for women to connect and network and find new opportunities um, to tell their stories and share their stories and do all of those things that again are near and dear to my heart. So we're rolling out in about two to three months to uh, corporations and also to individuals uh, in coming months too. So stay tuned, contact me, contact, look at Alfie, alfieco.com. Um, and it's, um, we're on a mission. We're on a mission to do something where we are changing, enhancing lives, uh, one individual at a time, one community at a time, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's nonstop. It's extremely hard work. I'm in way over my head again, going back to something I said earlier. Every day I get, you know, peppered with questions and I'm okay saying, I have no idea what the answer is. And I think also that's liberating, but I also say, I'm gonna do my very best to find out and get back to you. So. It's um, it's an incredible mission that we're on, and I'm so glad that you're in Alfie, and I look forward to when all of the viewers and listeners are in as well. So we build this beautiful community, and we affect change together. Sounds like a great platform. And when you're on Alfie, there are different interests there that you can subscribe to. Can you tell us more about that? Because I think it's also linked to how to succeed. It is. So when you're in Alfie, we have um, an events platform within. So we have talks that are happening just about every day, sometimes two a day. We have jobs platform. So if you're looking for a job, uh, you can find live jobs. You can apply for jobs from the app. We have inspirational stories from across the globe where this is all our intellectual property, if you will. We're not taking content from elsewhere and and using it as our own. We're creating all of our own content. We have trailblazer videos, um, interviews with really incredible women from, again, from um, all walks of life, all industries. You can form groups within. We have a book club coming up. We have a women in fashion group. We have, you can form your own groups in it. And um, beautiful things are beginning to happen. So there's something for everyone. And it's a place where um, we can all, inspire one another, lift one another up, and be totally real with one another. I like that. Be totally real with one another. No need to be pretentious. Be our authentic selves. For those that are watching, you can see that website on the ticker. It's alfieco.com, A-L-P-H-Y-C-O.com. And for those listening, I just spelled it out. So you have no excuse but to go learn about Alfie. And I know there's some of you that are watching now that are wondering, how do you get that invite? So how does that work, Jillian? So special for all of your incredible viewers, listeners, friends, um, connect with me on LinkedIn. And I will, I promise I will get back to you and just send me a hello and I'm happy to respond and get you invited um, to join Alfie and we will be honored to have you. Um, you heard that. Connect with Jillian on, on LinkedIn and she'll be happy to share that with you. Um, and I'm on Instagram and other, you can DM me wherever. 
Yes, yes, yes. Um, we have Abba from Florida saying she will check it out. Yes, Abba. Um, Abba is a mental health advocate. I think this is going to be a great platform for you. Check it out. I actually have one invite remaining, Abba. And so I will send that invite to you. And you can invite three people from your circle. Yes, um, that's right. It's a new feature we just rolled out. You are so current, of course. So yes, so once you're in, you have three invites to invite um, women you admire, love, uh, think would enjoy being a part of this community and benefit from being a part of this community. Thank you for mentioning that. Yes. Um, and so when you invite your three, they can go ahead and invite their nine. I hope I can do math. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you're, been, brave. Uh, you're brave you did that for all to see as you were thinking uh, it out no. i know okay. i know well julian this is amazing that you um are you were a journalist and you were a writer and now you're in tech how did you transition into your different roles well, it speaks to, I think, what we all have. If maybe you don't, maybe it takes a while to identify what it is. Um, we all have <clears throat> transferable skills. So for me, it's, um, I became really good, again, just by doing it over and over and over again at storytelling. And at as a reporter, you know, you're sent out to gather information, to understand what the story is, to assimilate information very quickly. And to tell stories accurately, both sides. Um, it teaches you a great amount of empathy. Uh, so as a CEO and as a, as, a, as a founder of this company, I have, I look at it like we're still telling stories. We're telling the story of our company. We're going to be telling the story of our customers, of our clients, working with them to tell their stories and helping those, all of us in the Alfie community how do you represent yourself? How do you communicate? What is your personal brand? How do you advance yourself? How, um, how do you tell that story that is your story? Because everyone has a story. And so I think it's for me, it was, it was, it was, it seems like a, um, it seems like a major pivot, right? As you were saying, to go from journalism to storytelling to CEO of a tech company. Um, but again, I see it as a continuum. And I think we all, as we, as we um, advance in our careers and in our lives, you know, we develop certain skills. And so think about what are your skills? What, if, what are the things that you love to do? What have you gotten really good at? And I know everybody has something. And how can that lead you to open the next door? And then you open that one. And then what will be the next one? And so, so find those uh, maybe less obvious superpowers within. And they will translate into that next thing. Well, I like that. Find the less obvious superpower within. I'm going to be reflecting a lot tonight about that less obvious superpower that I may have. <laughs> And I encourage you, if you're listening or watching, to reflect and find what that um, less obvious superpower is. But remember, you've got that great kindness superpower in you that makes the world a better place. Oh, my goodness, Jillian. So you're a New York Times bestselling author. Your work has been nominated for the Pulitzer. I mean, tell me, how does that feel? You know, I feel, um, of course, really proud that I've worked hard and been able to do that. But I think I, I <clears throat> make the mistake that a lot of us make, and that is you climb a certain mountain, you get here, and then you look to what is the next peak that you want to climb, and you don't spend enough time patting yourself on the back like, oh, I really got somewhere. You know, I started out not knowing anyone in journalism, not really knowing what I was doing. And um, I persevered and it was really, really hard. Um, but I didn't, I'm always like, what's next? What's next? What's next? I don't know if you're like this, you know, you get to a certain place and, but I do advocate for taking a pause and being really proud of yourself. Um, 
So I do feel proud of myself, but I'm always looking at what's next and how can we make an impact? Um, right now in my life, I'm very, I'm very purpose driven with this. You know, I, I want to, um, I want to do all I can to affect change for the good. You know, I did that, I think with journalism, with storytelling, and now I'm using technology as, as this new medium to, I hope, reach people across the globe. Um, Yes. So did that answer? I, I do kind of pat myself on the back, but as I'm already marching off in, you know, to this next uh, great challenge. Well, know that as we are um, facing each other on the screen, I am patting you on the back because you. you have done amazing and give yourself some grace to enjoy your accomplishments. Yes. Yes. And um, along the way, there may be some disappointments, there may be some failures, but as you said, we're going on to the next opportunity. Uh, viewers, listeners, I know you are inspired by Julian tonight. Um, it has been a great conversation. I cannot believe that we are already at the 30 minute mark. No, no. Yes. We yeah, will have. We just scratched the surface. I know. We will have to have Julian back because she's got tons of nuggets to share with us. But before we say good night to everybody watching or those that are catching the replay or listening on their drive over the weekend, um, I bet you have some nuggets, some final words on success for everybody who happens to be listening or watching. One of my favorite sayings is, and it's actually, <clears throat> it's something that I always have on my desk, and that is um, the will, the, the <clears throat> it, I have it right here, so I'm going to get it. It is the will to do, <clears throat> the power to dare, the will to do, the soul to dare, the will, have the will to do, the soul to dare. So that's what I would leave people with. And it's been an honor and a pleasure being here. It went too quickly. And I look forward to seeing you all in Alfie. And thank you for this fantastic interview. Well, the will to do, the soul to dare. Um, keep daring people and yes. keep coming back to listen to the everyday conversations that we have. This is Humanity Chats where we get together and share these human interest stories. Sometimes we do get sad. Sometimes we are uplifted, motivated, and we are so thankful to Jillian for um, joining us today and for sharing those sweet words with us. Um, if you're not inspired today, look, come back re-listen to the episode and you will get inspired. But I hope you're coming back next week. And you know what? We have a launch on Saturday where um, Rosemont Sapon Owens, she is out of Minnesota. We have the vice president of Liberia joining us. We have dignitaries from South Africa and Minnesota joining us. Um, we're going to be talking about empowering girls, education, and the power of representation. As we were talking with Julian, she said that you, you become what you see. Yes. That's what we're going to talk about on Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Margie TV. So join us if you have the time. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much from Jillian and myself. Um, this has been Humanity Chats. We're happy you're here. Remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Leave a review if you love that conversation because we want more people to learn about us. Thank you so much. Have a good night from Margie and Julian. Thank you. Bye.